Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and this is my update on the SpaceX launch failure, which everyone is talking about, of course, because we're all rocket fans. Unfortunately, this failure comes on Elon Musk's birthday, so happy birthday, Elon Musk, and I mean that in the sincerest way possible. It would have been great to see your rocket land on the barge in the ocean instead of landing in many pieces in the Atlantic Ocean. That's, uh, that's why we call it rocket science. Space is hard, and getting into orbit is the hardest and riskiest part. You know, generally, every year we've had about 5% failures in launch vehicles, so this isn't too bad in terms of uh, SpaceX's record. It's still, you know, mean, means that they're not, means they're better than some space programs, but it is unfortunate, yes. Well, anyway... So what appears to have happened, and this is based on information that Elon Musk tweeted out, was that around 2 minutes and 19 seconds after launch, there was an overpressure in the second stage oxygen tank. So this is the second stage that would carry the spacecraft into orbit. And overpressure generally means that something, well, the pressure's getting too high, but it typically can lead to, be because something catches fire inside a pressurized environment, or... Perhaps there's too much uh, pressurization liquid uh, too much pressurization helium going into the tank. But regardless, a an overpressure event typically is a prelude to tank failure, tank rupture, and then potentially an explosion. Just for comparison, another more famous oxygen tank overpressure event would be Apollo 13, right, where uh, the wiring caught fire inside the oxygen tank and then caused an explosion. Regardless. The Whatever happened, it appears to have caused the Dragon capsule to detach, the rocket to become non-aerodynamic, lose its control, and, I guess, rotate and disintegrate. The main engines continued to fire all through, through this, and uh, apparently, after the event, the Dragon capsule was still delivering telemetry, uh, unfortunately, although it was designed to soft land with parachutes, I'm pretty sure that there was no way for the people in the ground to actually trigger parachute deployment uh, and save the, the cargo. Would have been cool if that had happened. But just for comparison, if this had been a manned launch using a Dragon 2, it is fully expected that the uh, parameters of this failure were, uh, were in the range which would have been survivable by the Dragon 2 escape system. So... Uh, at least in that, you know, we, we shouldn't be too uh, we shouldn't be too worried about crew failures for a Dragon Two program in the future. Anyway, this was a launch of cargo to the space station. Uh, they were carrying, you know, food, fuel. They were carrying some more uh, EVA supplies, and in their uh, unpressurized cargo area in the trunk, they were carrying the international docking adapter number one, which is something, uh, an evolution for the space station in terms that we should be, that's going to be critical to future events, let's say, future operations. Now, because this is a supply failure, this is kind of getting, I guess people are starting to get concerned because while the supply program was designed to handle failures, this is the third failure in a year. They certainly weren't designed to handle three failures in a year, but we're told that it's probably going to be fine because they have the crew have four months of supplies. We have a Progress spacecraft going up on July 3rd. So if you remember, the there was a previous Progress failure back, I think, in March. I could be wrong on that. And uh, incidentally, the other failure I'm referring to is the rather spectacular Antares launch failure. The Orbital Sciences Cygnus spacecraft was on top of that, and it exploded, exploded seconds after launch in October. That was uh, some failure in one of their rocket engines there. So what we've got progress going up. We also have orbital sciences are going to continue to fly their Cygnus spacecraft, but they're instead going to fly it on a United Launch Alliance uh, spacecraft, an Atlas, I believe. They've got two launches scheduled, and then they're hoping that their Antares Mark II will be flight-worthy at, uh, at some point so that they can start flying it on their own hardware again. Regardless, the failure of SpaceX's stuff is unfortunate. SpaceX itself is probably going to have to ground its launches until they can come up with some sort of uh, report on the failure. 
The FAA has basically said that this is a launch mishap. This is important. It means that SpaceX handle the investigation on their own, although they will have obviously access to to everyone else that has information. It's just, it just means that the FAA isn't forcing them to to study things in any particular way. So one would hope that they have a launch cause assessment, a launch failure report in in the next few months and the FAA will then review that and then decide whether they can return to flight or not. So they, I think it may cause a delay of their JSON launch, which is, was going to be from Vandenberg later in the year. But I suspect that SpaceX will be able to fly again before the end of the year with luck. Uh, there are also other ways to deliver cargo to the space station. Now, the Japanese have got a spacecraft, the HTV, which is their automatic transfer vehicle that has been transferring uh, cargo, although I don't think there's any launches scheduled until much later. The Europeans have also been supplying stuff. They, they have their autonomous transfer vehicle, which they, they have, give them cool names like Johannes Kepler, Jules Verne, Albert Einstein, and Georges Lemaitre. But after the launch, last launch, they, they said they were going to retire the program. I'm sure that they could restart that program if it was mission critical. Instead, they are pushing their, for, their resources towards the service module of the Orion spacecraft. That will be their contribution to ongoing uh, space station operations. Anyway, uh, another beyond the supplies being missing, there's another thing that the Dragon capsule did that the other spacecraft didn't do, and it is it was the only one which could return stuff safely to Earth. So when you do an experiment in space and you want to bring the the specimens back to Earth, you would you know load them onto the Dragon spacecraft. So that is going to be the biggest problem. They, everything else can be supplied by the other suppliers, but the only one that can actually return cargo safely is the Dragon capsule. So hopefully they get that flying soon. If not, well, <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll find out what happens in the next few months. But yes, uh, happy birthday, Elon Musk. Sorry it had to be under such circumstances, but I hope that you will fly safe again in the future. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.